Hello, and welcome back to Freedom Planet with me, Matthew Caddis, a.k.a. Puggy. So, final Dreadnought, um, stage four, and also the final level in the game, is kind of, um, well, um, a mismatch of various things. It has the disappearing Mega Man platforms, um, and a long climb upwards, seriously. Um, and these, and the bouncy blue paths, not really that bouncy, from, um, uh, um, the previous level, and the proven cannons, of course. The, it seems the said cannons could also change direction, which I didn't, we didn't see earlier, because I was moving too fast with Lilac. Um, so yeah. And of course, Lilac is probably pissed right now, because her, one of her best friends, Mila Bassett, got turned into a mutant, and we don't know if she, she's dead or not. Seriously, this game went from, um, uh, um, this game went from being a, like a Mega Drive era, early 90s platformer, to worrying, uh, featuring some, um, very uh, girly tropes, I guess. No, no, girly tropes, that's wrong, really. I'm sorry, um, but certainly with the thing, and to Lilac getting tortured by Lord Brevin, and, um, and Mila, of course, and also warring between the kingdoms at the same time, as said uh, things um, and everything over the kingdom stone. Uh, to uh, that, well, that and um, Mila getting turned into a mutant, of course, eventually. Even though she was helping us in the stage just before. Anyway, um, my ranting aside, we have these warps here. Which we want to actually avoid because it'll just send us back to the beginning. Seriously, that's what these things do. It's not like with earlier in the stage. And then we get some tractor beam uh, shit here. Uh, that warp at the very top, that does actually send you back up. So yeah, um, there's a water shield there. Not that it will be of much use in this level because uh, there's no... Um, and unless uh, Brevin turns the air off again, which he might. But I don't think he does. Also, we're deep within the um, uh, airship now, so yeah. And, um, well, you know, I don't know anything. So I'll just run along here. And more turrets and everything. And more um, soldiers warping in, yay. And more Wunoks, I guess. Uh, and now, uh, Brevin just wants to kill us. Seriously, just like with Dr. Eggman, although this time it is uh, unlike with uh, Eggman in Sonic Forces uh, and the giant laser beam that he used against Sonic in the uh, web, was it? Uh, oh yes, Chemical Plant. Well, what was left over of Chemical Plant. Um, it was water, not a laser beam. This is constant and... It makes sense why Brevin is a bit more tenacious than Eggman is. Seriously. And I'm saying that as a fan of the Sonic games and of, I guess, Dr. Eggman as a video game villain. But now we get our asses kicked. Barely survived that I did. Uh, but never mind. Uh, let's get killed by a turret instead. Yeah, back me into a corner. You get, you bet your ass I'm gonna probably die if I get blasted and only have a little bit of health top of the area. We will have these uh, springs, although it might be... Yeah, okay, and we have a few tractor beams as well. The only downside is, the, is some of the springs push us straight into the laser beam, which isn't great. Uh, but never mind. And towards the end of this area, more food cannons, yes. But that's what, not what I was aiming for when I was saying that. Seriously. Where the hell is the kitchen sink? Uh, but never mind. And seemingly this now turns into a round of something from Donkey Kong Country 3 because uh, that crack shot is trying to get us. I have no use for forgiveness, especially from someone who puts my homeworld at risk for an oversized battery. I offer you one final chance. Leave now. 
So be it. Oh boy, Brevin means business. Then again, so does Lilac. Because she, um, of course, does have her thing. But uh, this fight is fought in a few phases. First of all, we get something very similar to what we fought in Battle Glacier. Um, Revan's gigantic warship and whatnot. Seriously. And it's attacked in the same way. It does have a few more attacks than before. It has uh, um, seemingly a group attack with that cannon. Um, Revan will charge at us just like before. And just like before, we can damage the, the orb on the front of the ship. So yeah, and, and it also launches missiles. Yes, that is a thing, of course. Um, and, and if you die, you s certainly start from this area with the thing and everything, but never mind that. Uh, let's get back to Brevin. But yeah. Um, this is largely identical to, to that fight in the uh, thingy. Uh, I think we were the first boss in uh, Battle Glacier. Um, the thing I like to do with the uh, missiles is probably use uh, Lilac's Dragon uh, Boost to get away from them because what happens with the missiles it launches is that the airship will um, spread some goop that way. Maybe um, it, it borrowed heavily Maybe uh, Brevin borrowed a bit of Mila's technology because we find out in the next game, Freedom Flight 2, that she becomes a scientist with Mila. So maybe that's what happened. I do not know. The game isn't especially explicit about that. Certainly not the first one. Second one is it does a bit more world building, um, especially around the each, each of the nations, especially Sri Gang. You don't see much of that in this game because. Yeah. Much ass kicking. What will happen with Brevin? He will get into this mech, which honestly does look like one of, another one of the seven force. Indeed, it is as, is as quick as Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, so, yeah, we have to damage the cockpit. We will launch lasers and do that um, to create a big shield and launch all sorts of projectiles at us. Seriously. Very good homing in fact, attacks. Um, seriously. Some of which which leave um, a burning after thingy. After shock or whatever. I don't even care. I know there's not much way of getting um, health back here, seriously. But he does that charge attack though, you can actually um, get out of the way by um, doing a dragon cyclone and damaging his cockpit at the same time, so yeah. Never mind that. And no, being with his shield also hurts you as well, seriously. Not great, is it? No. Other than that, yeah, he's moving all over the place. <sighs> and I died again. It is very easy to die to this boss. Seriously. At least I'll give this game this. Um, after you've beaten uh, Brevin's first phase, he will go to his second phase as well. So you don't have to start from stage one, at least, with this final boss. Brevin taking two lots of a beating from Lilac. What will happen then? We will finally face Brevin himself, and he moves really quickly. He has some similar moves, and he also launches bombs at the ground. If you try to strike him with your um, thing, with your hair whip, be warned, he does have a dagger ready hidden under his uh, cape. So, yeah. As for that, you'll have to um, attack him with the dragon cyclone while he's in the air, which isn't easy because of timing and everything, but can be done, can be done. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, yeah. Very annoying boss. But he is the final boss, so he's supposed to be. And yeah. What else can I say? Uh, when he's darting around the arena, that's annoying as well, because I can't really time a dragon boost at the same time as that. Um, as with his dagger move, yeah. Um, he is very underhand, is uh, Brevin. 
Seriously. Other than that, I don't know. When he does have a moment of weakness when he's finished doing his, um, I guess, his green dash attack around the arena and everything, because he kind of jumps up in the air and, and raises his cape as if he's like Batman trying to pounce down on you or something, although. Yeah, uh, maybe there's some compared Brevin to Batman of all things. But, yeah. Other than that, um, yeah. Yeah, Brevin certainly is not the Dark Knight. Anyway, that being said, I will get out of the way of him. Um, at least uh, that way, and um, not me back and take quite a bit of damage of this guy. Seriously. Brevin moves so quickly here. And sometimes when he's like in midair, he will use his bombs and unfortunately he will, will get hit by him while he's doing so because the bomb will land straight on Lilac's head. He also shoots a laser sometimes instead of his um, thing. He throws you sometimes, does Brevin? Seriously, and it's somewhat impossible to see when he will stop doing his green dash attacks, so yeah. Honestly, this is a, more of a battle for survival than anything else, especially if you're not playing this on easy mode, because at least on easy mode, I'll say this, your health does regenerate slowly, but um, since Brevin is so quick, uh, it may be hard for first time players when you're dealing with him, seriously. But uh, there you go. And then uh, at the very end of this comes probably one of my favorite lines from Lilac. She's alive! I'm sorry. You weren't yourself. It's okay. It's okay. I couldn't save it. I couldn't even stop him from getting away. Don't beat yourself up. Brevin didn't get the stone. And his army was destroyed with his ship. Thanks to you, our mission is complete. But at what cost? How are we going to survive without any more energy? Uh, Lilac, you might want to look up. Wow. It, it's not destroyed? It must have changed form! Call me impressed. An opportunity has fallen to our world. We now realize that the Kingdom Stone was never fading, but changing in ways that were transparent to us in our lust for power and prestige. The wind carries its eternal glow to the furthest reaches of our lands, and former enemies extend their hands to one another, acknowledging the error of their ways. Creatures, both mutant and metal, still ravage the landscape, and it will be some time before we can dispose of them once and for all. Perhaps most troubling of all is that Lord Brevin, the monster who threw our world into chaos, is nowhere to be found. There is still much work to be done. We are not completely out of danger. But my people and I will rest easy tonight, knowing that the bravery and sacrifice of a select few have given our world another chance.
I never got to properly thank you all for helping me. Hey, we're buds. That's what buddies do. Well, on behalf of the Coalition of Planets, you have our sincerest gratitude. Psst, come here, you. <laughs> thank you. So, I guess this is it, huh? I'm gonna miss you. Me too. Well, who knows? I could be coming back sooner than you think. Until then, just take care of yourselves. The world needs you. See you around, spaceman! Goodbye, Torque! Bye, Torque! See you soon! I'm guessing that's how the game ends. That was Freedom Planet. A game that plays a lot better than Sonic Mania, and I love Sonic Mania. Yeah, the, the graphics are decent. Uh, for a throwback to the 16-bit era. The, the gameplay is mostly awesome. The only downside, dare I say, is the fact that the um, story is a bit lacking somewhat, even though um, I, I dare say it is still fine, I guess. But um, that being said, it, it is still an awesome game. Anyway, that being said, I have one more thing to do with this game before I finish with this Let's Play. And that is, of course, to look at the whole um, thing of uh, Torx levels, yes! Because that was actually done as DLC, and or at least in the PC version, but um, we will have to see that when we get to um, those levels. There were also going to be some levels that Galaxy Trail made with uh, Spade, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. So only Talks levels um, got the DLC treatment, I'm afraid. So yeah. Anyway, that being said, I will see you for Talks levels. And then, um, I don't know what I'm going to do after that, but that being said, I'll see you for that. Goodbye.